rocks or sedimentary rocks which have been changed owing to the great action of temperature and pressure. When these rocks are exposed to intense heat and pressure, they tend to be changed or modified and the end product of this modification is what we call metamorphic rock. Examples of such rock include gneiss, schist, slates, etc. We also have the characteristics that make up or define the metamorphic rocks. One is that they may occur in layers. They may also be hard or soft and may also contain fossils. And they exist in different colors and texture. Whether a metamorphic rock occur in, occurs in layers or hard or soft or contains fossils is a function of the parent rock material, that is the pre-existing rock from which or from where it was metamorphosed or changed. Economic importance of rocks to man. Rocks are of immense importance to man. One is itself as a source of mineral. Minerals like limestones, petroleum, gold, tin, diamond, etc are all associated with rocks, different types of rocks. And our rocks also serve as construction materials for construction purposes. Granites and the lights are crushed into various sizes for use as construction materials for building purposes and what have you. Rocks also serve as beautiful sites for tourism. And such rock like um, the Oluma rock and the Zuma rock are very beautiful sites for tourist attraction. Rocks are also are uh, important as they serve as ornamental material used in beautifying environments and um, houses. Rocks, like I said, stated earlier, are very important factors in the formation of soil. Without rocks, it may be difficult to have what we call soil. Because soil are products or formed from uh, the products of rocks that have been disintegrated. Now rocks also serve as raw materials for industries. Here is a very good depiction of what a metamorphic rock looks like. Because of the modification you can see the wavy nature of that rock. This is because while it is undergoing the change as a result of heat and pressure, the initial configuration of the rock tends to be deformed. And in that process, we have the wavy nature, as you can see from, from the diagram. Now let's look at uh, the major landforms of the world. Major landforms such as the hills, the mountains, the plains, and um, lakes and the lakes. Now, mountains. Mountains are great elevated land surfaces resulting from intense internal forces 
mountains they have stiff steep slopes and show distinct peaks according to their mode of formation mountains can be classified as full block volcanic or residual mountains we will consider them one after the other four mountains four mountain contains old hard rocks with steep slides or steep sides they have folding appearance and show distinct peaks of great heights they also exist in layered form they have what we call anticlines and synclines i will use a figure or a diagram here to illustrate what we call or what we mean by the anticlines and the synclines. Now, example of um, full mountains include the Himalayas, the Andes, the Alps, and Atlas Mountains. Now, this figure shows what a full mountain looks like. In figure A1, that is the state of the egg crust before folding or before the compressional force. The compressional force that results to what we call folding. And in figure A2, after the effect of the compressional force, the egg cross tends to fold. The effect of folding gives rise to what we call anticline and syncline. Now, the anticline is the upfold. The upfold. Whereas the syncline is the downfold, which is as a result of compressional forces acting upon the earth crust. Mode of formation of the mountain, the full mountain. Full mountain are formed by a large scale horizontal movement of the earth caused by stress and compressional forces which causes expansion or contraction, as the case may be, of some parts of the egg crust. When this happens, it gives rise to a folded crust where we have the upfold and the downfold. The upfold is, like I said before, is the anticline. This is the anticline and the downfold is the syncline. Now let's look at um, the block mountains. The block mountain contains also old hard rocks with flat or slightly sloping surfaces. They have steep sides. Steep sides meaning that um, the sides are very abrupt they are not gentle at all very steep such that anything on the top can easily roll down with no or little or no resistance and it has or usually associated with rift valleys and they are blocks between two faults in the air cross a fault is a crack in the earth crust that has undergone significant movement and the block mountains are usually very high example of block mountains include Hans Rock Mountain, Voges Mountain, etc. Now look at this illustration here 
we have a normal fault. I said the fault is a crack in the head crust where there has been a significant movement. And in this case, a normal fault occurs. Normal fault occurs when the hanging wall moves down relative to the, the foot wall. You can see the arrow pointing down. That is the hanging wall. And the other side, the arrow is moving upward. That is what we call the foot wall. The two of them are moving relative to each other. The hanging wall moves downward relative to the foot wall. As a result, the foot brings about the block mountain, as you can see on, on the diagram, where the compressional force is tends to pull these two block materials or rock materials apart. Mode of formation of block mountains. Block mountains are formed when the earth cracks due to what? Due to faulting. And this may be as a result of tensional or compressional forces. In the case of the diagram shown here, a tensional force has pulled the two rock materials that have been um, that have been introduced as a result of faults 